anticipated for the COVID-19 pandemic response. This is the longest continuous activation in Wisconsin history, and boy, have the people at the SEOC and their many public and private partners accomplished a lot in these last 100 days. So today, I want to talk a bit about those accomplishments and everything our folks at the SEOC have been working on over the past few months. In the early stages of the pandemic, the SEOC took measures to help flatten the curve and box in the virus. Preparing for outbreaks in Wisconsin one is one, was one of the first priorities of the SEOC, so they set up isolation facilities so folk, folks could safely isolate themselves away from others. They also took early and continued action to ensure healthcare workers and facilities had the tools, resources, beds, ventilators, and other supplies they need to tackle, to tackle COVID-19 and to ensure they were well equipped to care for patients. But we also had to ensure that in the event of an outbreak, we could protect the folks on the front lines by responding to COVID-19, by helping get personal protective equipment to the folks who need it the most. To date, the SCOC has dis distributed more than 45,000 N95 and 97,000 KN95 masks, nearly 8 million medical and surgical masks, and more than 240,000 face shields and goggles, and 521,000 medical gowns to healthcare providers. They also inst installed and operated the Battelle system to decontaminate and reuse N95 respirators, which have been a scarce resource in Wisconsin and across our country since we started battling this virus months ago. Increasing testing has also been a critical part of our state's response to the COVID-19 pandemic and a pillar of the Badger bounce back plan. In 100 days, the SEOC took our lab capacity from the ability to perform, perform zero COVID-19 tests in early March to the capacity to perform 17,668 tests daily. And because of their good work, as of yesterday, we have tested 491,702 one, 491, people in Wisconsin, including those at nursing homes, hospitals, clinics, and local and tribal health departments. But in order to make sure our testing efforts were meaningful, we also had to make sure that we bolstered our contact tracing to prevent folks who tested positive from exposing family members and neighbors. The SEOC used our increased testing efforts to help protect folks who might have been exposed to COVID-19 and minimize the spread of the virus. We transferred more than 300 state employees from our state agencies and hired more than 200 LTEs to conduct disease and contact investigations. And to date, we have conducted more than 9,000 disease and contact investigations to help contain the spread of COVID-19 in Wisconsin. As the SEOC moves forward, they are continuing to take steps to ensure the safe reopening of Wisconsin and to prepare for any future surges, including continuing to provide guidance and assistance to businesses and local and tribal health departments across the state, as well as working with the Department of Public Instruction to ensure our kids can go back to school safely this fall. As we continue to battle the COVID-19 pandemic, the SEOC remains vital in protecting the health and safety of Wisconsinites. I want to thank the many partners who have assisted us in this response, including hundreds of state employees, including folks at the Department of Health Services, the Wisconsin Emergency Management System, local public health departments across our state, the United Way, the Salvation Army, EPIC, Exact Sciences, the UW System, and the 3,800 citizen soldiers of the Wisconsin National Guard who have done everything from being poll workers to PPE distribution to collecting more than 145,000 specimens at 190 testing sites across our state. We continue to make progress in the fight against COVID-19, not only in public health, but in our economic recovery as well. We know that the COVID-19 pandemic has been hard on Wisconsinites physically, emotionally, mentally, and financially. 
Our administration is con committed to using our federal funds from the CARES Act to help folks across our state. Some of the ways we're doing that is with our $25 million Wisconsin Rent Assistance Program, providing $3,000 directly to individuals struggling to make ends meet due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We're also providing $2,500 grants to 30,000 Wisconsin small businesses to help them get back on their feet with the We're All In It Small Business Grant Program. The Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation is accepting applications until 11.59 p.m. tonight. So get your applications in and take advantage of this program to assist with the cost of business interruptions, health and safety improvements, wages and salaries, rent, mortgages, and inventory. In addition to small businesses, we know the COVID-19 pandemic has hit farmers hard. That's why we use CARES funding to launch a $50 million Wisconsin Farm Support Program, providing direct aid payments to our farmers that keep our state and our country fed. Folks can apply for those funds by visiting the Wisconsin Department of Revenue website until June 29th. From our $15 million food security initiative to the $200 million Roots to Recovery grant program for local government to respond to their unique needs, to the $80 million investment in our K-12 schools and higher education institutions, we are making this funding work for Wisconsinites. That includes over $1 billion in funding for statewide testing, contact tracing, operations and response because folks, we are not out of the woods yet. So while the SEOC has done exceptional work to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Wisconsin, we know this virus is still very present and spreading in our communities. So folks, don't risk it. Please continue to follow best practices like wearing a mask whenever you go out, washing your hands frequently for 20 seconds and maintain social distancing from folks who are not in your immediate household. Continue to monitor yourself for symptoms of COVID-19. And if you have any, any symptoms or you've recently been in a large gathering of people, please find a testing site near you and get tested. Here in Wisconsin, we look out for our neighbors and the best way you can do that now is by taking these basic precautions to protect yourself, your family, and our communities. And with that, I'll hand it over to Secretary Designee Andrea Powell. Thanks, Governor. Good after, afternoon, everyone, and thank you again for joining us today. Uh, I do want to echo the governor, governor's appreciation for the critical work that our statewide response uh, has done throughout this pandemic. What they have accomplished in the first 100 days of this response has saved lives and helped make Wisconsin a safer place to be during this pandemic. In addition to those that the governor already mentioned, another of our teams doing impressive work is our data team. As part of our commitment to transparency, they have continually been adding new pieces of information, new levels of granularity, and new ways to display our information to ensure that the data is accessible, understandable, and actionable. And today we are announcing new county and regional level data. Just as we have used data to drive our decisions at the state level, we want to make sure local leaders, businesses, and individual Wisconsinites have the tools they need to make decisions in their communities. And the more information people have about COVID-19 in their area, the better those decisions will be when it comes to the health and well-being of all of our communities. Let me take just a minute to explain. On this new dashboard, each county and region is assessed in terms of their burden of COVID-19 cases. That is the total number of cases in that area per 100,000 residents over the past two weeks. And in terms of their trajectory of cases or the percent change of those cases during the past two weeks. These two data points are combined into a composite indicator to determine the overall, excuse me, overall activity level of COVID-19 in a county or a region. Our local and tri tribal health department partners and county leadership have asked us for this information to help them make decisions at the local level. The dashboard, uh, 
The dashboard does that and also provides this information to all Wisconsinites. So we plan to expand the dashboard to include more data and additional indicators related to things like disease surveillance, healthcare capacity, public health response in the counties and regions, similar to what we've uh, begun displaying today. So data-informed decisions are better decisions, and it is our aim to effectively support counties and regions across the state during this pandemic response. So let me give you an update on where our numbers stand today. We have 68 active labs running COVID-19 tests in Wisconsin uh, with our daily lab capacity at 17,759 tests. We've had 478,165 negative tests here in Wisconsin, uh, which is an increase of 11,531 over yesterday. There are now 25,331 confirmed positive COVID cases here in Wisconsin, which is an increase of 263 cases over yesterday. And our total number of deaths have now reached 750. COVID-19 continues to spread here in Wisconsin, as the governor has said, and I encourage you to continue the best health practices that we have been talking about throughout this response. Stay home, limit your non-essential trips, practice physical distancing, wear a clay face, excuse me, a cloth face covering if you can. Uh, thank you for your continued work to help stop the spread, keep yourself, your neighbors, and your communities uh, safe from COVID-19. Now we're